you have a guy in this campus, Dr. Muller, Robert Muller. He's an atmospheric scientist. Forever and a day, whenever anybody in the media wanted to talk to a skeptic from one of the UC systems, they would go to Dr. Muller. And he'd say, yes, I'm a skeptic on global warming. I don't know, maybe so, maybe not so. I'm looking at all the data. I can't make up my mind. Last year, Dr. Muller came about and said, all right, finally I'm in. There is man-caused global warming. I've seen the data. I'm in. I'm no longer a skeptic. I'm a believer. Media went wild with that pronouncement. It's interesting, just, just about the same time, there was another UC professor. He teaches at UC Santa Barbara. He's a professor emeritus. He's a Nobel laureate. His name is Hal Lewis. Hal Lewis, about the same time Mueller said, I'm a believer, Hal Lewis, Nobel Prize winner, came out and said, anthropogenic global warming is the greatest and most pseudoscientific fraud I've seen in my long life as a physicist. So since the end of the Little Ice Age, in 1850, here's the bottom line. Temperature's risen one degree. Most of that occurred between, before 1940. Carbon dioxide, 38 one thousandths of one percent of our atmosphere is carbon dioxide. That's it, 38 one thousandths of one percent. It's always been a variable gas. We know that back when the dinosaurs were around, it was probably six to eight times what it is today in terms of content of the atmosphere. Now, what was causing that back in the dinosaur day? Was it SUVs or was it dinosaur farts? I don't know. The phoniest pollution of them all, carbon dioxide. I mean, what a scam. You can't touch it, you can't taste it, you can't see it, you can't smell it, and we're regulating it. I believe in climate change because that's what climate does. It always changes. I just gave you the last 10,000 years. In 10,000 years, we're going to be into another ice age. There's no getting around it. The Earth's orbit is not circular, it's elliptical. We're just going to get farther and farther away from the sun, and pretty soon it's going to be Parka time, and after that people are going to start dying. You've probably heard this from Al Gore, maybe some of your professors as well, that 97% of all scientists believe there's no global warming, 97%. That statistic comes from a study by the American Geological Union, and when you read through the study, as I have, because I read all this stuff, uh, that study comes from a poll of 77 scientists. Now, there are tens of thousands of scientists in the United States. That poll, 97% believe in anthropogenic global warming. That means only 3% don't. 77 people. That's it. And they will not tell us how they selected those people. Now, that's pretty crappy in terms of science. Coal has been really good. And I'll tell you why. There was a time when all the homes in America were heated with firewood. Then suddenly came about coal. The, th the forests were about to be slashed completely to the ground because everybody wanted their firewood. Coal came along and said, people said, wow, this little black rock, I can put it right here in the stove, light it, whoo, look at this, it's hot. We don't have to chop down the forest anymore. Coal saved the forests from being chopped down. Can I tell you if we took all of the waste ever produced from all 104 of the nuclear power plants in the United States, we could pretty much put it all inside this auditorium. That's all the nuclear waste. And do you realize if our federal government would allow us to reprocess that nuclear waste like all the other countries do, you could pretty much take half this room and that would be all the nuclear waste. But our federal government doesn't allow us to reprocess it because they want to use the waste as a scare tactic to keep us from building these nuclear power plants. If we really want the electric car to be something that we all drive, well then we should be 100% nuclear power because then all of that energy is coming right from nuclear power. There are absolutely no emissions whatsoever. We in the United States do an excellent job of cleaning up our atmosphere. If the environmentalists in this country were so dadgum sure that pollution is killing the planet, instead of protesting coal plants in the United States, why don't they go to China? They're building a new coal plant every week. And they have, no, they have no scrubbers. They have no filters. I mean, they're just blowing that stuff up into the sky. And it's interesting how everybody just sort of keeps back and watches. Same thing in India. Same thing in Russia. Same thing throughout South America. I mean, we have done an excellent job with our technology. And we started doing this before the Clean Air Act was even in existence because the states and the community said, listen, 
this smoke, this pollution, we gotta clean this stuff up. The people can make these decisions on their own.